Um, I'm assuming in length in English class or maybe in biology you've heard the phrases nature and nurture. Nature and nurture. What does nature refer to? What's that? Yep. Um, uh, well, that's nurture. Nurture is the outside. Nurture is the outside. So the outside and how it influences you. And what's the nature part? Instincts. Instincts. Things that automatically happen from within. The rolling your tongue. That's nature. It's genetics. So nature. Nurture. Nature is genes, instincts. Nurture is environment. The question is, when it comes to language, how much of your ability to talk to understand others is due to your genes, and how much of it is due to your environment, nurture. And so I want to introduce to you two psychologists who've done some research and written a lot of um, books and papers on this topic. Um, the first is Noam Chomsky. His theory, I don't know, can you see red? Is red visible? About the language acquisition device. We'll start there. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this to you. You'll put it in your notes. Some of it will make sense. Some of it you're like, that's, and I have a big question mark when I look at that. That's okay. As we continue to look through the resources I've given you, it'll start to make more sense. Noam Chomsky believed that our ability to speak is genetic, just like your ability to roll your tongue or to flip your tongue completely over is genetic. And he supported his theory by finding, by observing, that all humans have what he called innate mental biases. Our brains do it, but it's not conscious, and it happens regardless of the culture you're raised in. It happens all across the globe. Well, what are some of these innate mental biases? And your book does talk about these. Um, we immediately understand, in fact, even if it's not true, we will assume that labels refer whole objects, not parts. So what do I mean by that? Well, when my daughter was learning how to speak, she would ask me, what's that? What's that? What's that? She'd want to know what everything is. She'd point to an animal, and I'd say, that's a dog. She knew that I was referring to the whole object, not its tail, or its foot, or its fur, or its bark. She knew it was the whole object. Sometimes that might be wrong. Sometimes it's wrong to assume. But children will innately do that. She might point to this, and I would say that's a seat, but she might think I'm thinking about the whole desk. She'll, she'll have a bias. She'll think about the whole object. It's something that children do. Another bias. Labels denote whole classes of things. Not individual objects. Which is a good thing, but sometimes it makes children make errors. So if my, child, my daughter sees a dog, and she'll ask me, what's that? And I say a dog. Well, she'll know that anything that goes roof, roof, has a wagging tail is a dog. She won't assume that just that thing is a dog. She will start to realize that it's a whole category. There's lots of dogs out there. 
and she'll learn that because that's how her brain is programmed genetically to work. The problem is that some children will broaden that even further, and any animal with fur might be a dog. So it's a cat, oh, it's a dog, it's a bear, it's a dog. And so sometimes children will think all fluffy animals are dogs until they learn that those are the categories. That's just a bias of the brain. And the third, they assume anything with a name can only have one name. Sorry, that's So it's really confusing to a four-year-old. Um, I, I have a dog and she's a beagle. It's really confusing to my daughter, or it was a couple years ago, to tell her dog and to tell her beagle. She understood dog, what, this, this, this can only be one thing. It can't be a dog and a beagle. Now she understands that there's different types of dogs. She's, she's just starting to get there. Uh, but that's something that we see no matter the culture that supported the idea that it's innate that it's happening because of our biology. Um, another thing um, that you don't have to write down, because you'll find this in your book, and maybe I'll give you a little bit more tomorrow. Your brain is hardwired to analyze grammar, and children are doing it constantly. They're analyzing the way that we speak and the way we put words together. Um, all languages, whether it's Mandarin, whether it's Tagalog, which they speak in the Philippines, whether it's English or French, start from noun, verb, phrases. It's, it's universal. Um, children create their own grammatical rules to figure out language in the same way, regardless of culture. Um, children go through the same steps at the age of one, at the age of two, at the age of three, regardless of culture. Um, children can become fluent without formal training in speaking. Without nurture, they can still become fluent as long as they're exposed. Um, they combine words in ways that adults never would. An adult has never shown them how to do it, but children will make up different rules. Just because for some and they'll do it that same way regardless of culture. Um, so there's a lot supporting the idea that genetics is behind this. In your book, we'll talk more about that. What about nurture? What about the environment? Um, there's another guy called Lennonberg, and I can't remember his first name if it's Arthur, but we'll just go with Lennonberg. Lennonberg. And his critical period theory. And he studied. Noam Chomsky's work, and he says, yeah, there's definitely evidence that genetics has a lot to do with it, that our biology. But, I gotta fix that, that's bothering me. But I don't think it's the whole story is what was going through his head. He, he didn't believe that was the whole story. He says, nurture has to be part of it. And evidence he has to support that. Children raised in complete silence. And you have a video in your bundle on my big campus of a girl that was locked in a room until she was 12 or 14. Raised in complete silence. Children raised in complete silence grow deaf to grammar. And they never figure it out. He also says, well, why do you speak English? And this child speaks French because of who they were raised by. Nurture determines the language we speak. We are capable of learning from uh, correction. If someone corrects us, we learn that there's a correct way to do something and we continue to do that. Well, that was nurture. That wasn't our genes. He 
also supported it with his study of something called Parades. It used to be called Motheries, and then they realized that fathers do it too. Parades is a special language that parents speak to their children to help them learn how to speak. Have you ever watched a mother or someone with a baby? How do they talk to the baby? What do they do to their voice? They raise it. Higher pitch. Why do they do that? Why do they talk to a baby? Oh, look at that cute little baby. Why do they do that? Because they're silly. No, not because they're silly. What, what purpose might that serve? It over exaggerates so the baby can notice. And actually, I should put that over exaggerate sounds. What does the baby do when they hear that? Responds. They respond. It grabs the baby's attention. helps the child understand the difference between each word. Um, they will use shorter sentences. They'll use shorter words. They'll use short utterances because it's easier for the child to process. Um, they will listen to their child and then repeat what the child said to them. The child will say, I want milk. And the mom will say, oh, you would like a glass of milk. They recast it. It's the exact same content, but then they're teaching their child grammar rules or more formal ways of speaking. And that's parent ease. So, so which is more critical? We don't know. We know that both are needed. But we have evidence of children who were not exposed to language, and we now know that if children are not exposed to language by a certain age, they will never learn it. They will never be able to speak properly. And when you watch the video about Jeannie, um, there's a video clip on Jeannie, you'll see she learned certain vocabulary, like apple or pencil. But she was never able to learn grammar. That was, that was never. And now she's in her 60s or 70s. And she can't, or maybe it's her 50s, I don't know. But she can't talk. And that's that critical period, that at that certain age, children must be exposed to language. What questions do you have? So that's Nature and Nurture, Noam Chomsky and Lenenberg. Let me stop my recording.